Okay, so let's me talk about the final ending of this big chapter that I spend quite a time on polymer shape. And I talk about a lot of different one. And finally, I want you to give you an assignment. Uh, this is an assignment. You can do the, do the random walk simulation using simply using Excel. And you can use uh, MATLAB or uh, Python and other types of one. But uh, uh, Excel can be used uh, very simply. And it takes only a few minutes to set it up to do so. And then I, I encourage you to, to essentially looking at the video called Monte Carlo Simulation or Random Walk Model in Excel. This is three, three minutes and 20 second video. And you can uh, you do that. Actually, they show actually how you can generate those random numbers and generate this uh, plot. Uh, just looks like that. Each time when you do that, you can see these random walks are being popping up from the center of motions. And then they will do the random walk, and then you they will get you the one. Each time, you you find this one doing the random walk like this, random walk like that. And and then whenever you are done, the, the distance between here to the chain end, that will be your uh, distance on in the end-to-end -end distance. So then, that and this is uh, this is actual homeworks, and I give you the actually the the YouTube uh, video website, and you can just simply do the keyword search in the YouTube video under these titles, and then you guys can can find out. And I have provided here is uh, essentially make a table. And you should uh, finish uh, having the having these numbers. Uh, you, I will provide the word documents so you guys can just run the numbers, and then essentially writing the end-to-end -end distance. So end-to-end -end distance here, it is essentially, uh, and then and distance can be calculated by by this. Uh, essentially number of uh, the, the distance from the center of mass, right? So this is an x versus y. And if you, your end is ended up here, this is an end-to-end -end distance. And this is, a, let's say, a, and that's a, that's a b. That's a location of your final step. So you can simply looking at the last step after you have done the repeated the random walk for 100 times, and you can record this this h, which is uh, now just h is, which is uh, square root, a square and b square, and you will have this number. So you will just do it five times, and then this is just uh, the average of those numbers shown up by five, right? So now you you have this n versus average end-to-end uh, -end distance and you're going to repeat this one for for many times and you will not take a while and you can just uh, generate the next cell uh, when you generate the next cell which is uh, essentially x versus y you start from zero and then you will do the random walk I guess so that's an n I start from from zero to one you can go to certain n and this is uh, x that's a y coordinate, and that is what I mean by a, what I mean by b. Right? So therefore, you can you guys can calculate it, and you can just keep on increasing this number to 100, to 300, to one, uh, 500, and so on, and up to 10,000. So I just have a generate enough, like uh, many data points: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine data points. And you, at the end, you will you will plot n versus average end-to-end -end distance. Right. The benefit of for me to do is uh, you can quickly generate this the data, and that's uh, something like let's say you have mm, you have made it some data looks like that, and I want you to also uh, want you to find out can you show actually what is the the value of an A. So this is a, what is called the power law or scaling law. You remember that I, I talked a lot about root mean square and, to, and distance is to the square root to the N. So theoretically, N has to be 0.5. But in your simulation, the H average, which is a, 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 a root mean a square distance in 2D, and then how that N is 
what's the value for that, right? So if this is a case, what is a most typical way for you can do is simply you can, there are two ways for you to do, and uh, this is also, I made this, I like this assignment because that provides some insight for you to plot the data in different way. So you simply using the table on the, light, on the left, you can just simply plot N versus H average, right? But now you put put them, you click on that and making making this one as a putting a log scale, okay? And make make that as a log scale. This is exactly the what I have shown up here. I just put an H versus N value here, but you can see that. It is space at the regular interval for different orders of magnitude. That's a, what we call the log scale plot. Right? And then once you have this log scale plot, it is a, this is a essentially a log log scale plot for the quantity that you just simply obtain n versus an h. And then what you can do is, from here, you add, choose a, what is called the power law trend line options, and you click display in the equation on the chart. If you do that, and actually you, you see this, uh, the numbers showing up. So in, in my notation here, I ended up getting 0 0.558, which is um, not 0 0.5, but this close enough. And then if you do sufficient large enough, Eventually, a value should be so close to 0.5. Uh, it should be a 0.5. Right? Uh, some other students actually will say, oh, can I actually do it the other way? You guys can do equally this way. So I am going to make a new column called log n. So you, here, you can make log n. I guess uh, this one is value is 2. Obviously, that's a 3. That's like 4 and there is some number in between. So this is a, you put the value of log n in linear scale, right? And then also you put log h average in linear scale. And then you actually compare this, the plot. This plot, this plot is actually identical, okay? But this one is you do the power law fitting, power law fit. This one is you just simply do the linear fit because you just want to know the, the essentially what will be the slope on this. So that's a slope, and that slope is an A. And actually in the log log plot, the slope is an A, and that represents H scale to the power of n to the power of an a, whereas uh, this one is trying to say uh, log h proportional to a times log n, right? So this is uh, essentially the same quantity trying to show eventually h average from the simulation, what will be the, how many number of steps that you do, and what will be the power law values. And depending on the, because it's a random walk, everyone is different, right? So this, the value of an A, I'd like to show it, and you can, you need to provide the, the actual data and so on. And then let's see how you can uh, finish this assignment. And let me know if you have any questions. You can, you can plot, provide a plot this way or plot, provide a plot that way. But the, the one that I prefer is actually just simply using the n and h values and the, putting the, choosing the log log scale on each x and y axis. That's the one that I prefer, but I don't mind you guys using the one on the right as well.